Hey gang, it is January 31st, 2018, and I just wanted to do a little product review of this Harbor Freight Plasma Cutter. Um, for those of you that have been watching my videos for several years now, you know that this is probably my favorite tool. And I've had people ask me about it and want to know some things about it, so I thought I would share some information. Um, I bought this probably, it was mid-summer of 2014 and so far I've had no issues with it other than consumable tips everything is operated just fine um, as you can see I have still have the box for it I tend to hang on to these things for some reason but as you can see it's a Chicago electric and 240 volt inverter based plasma cutter and I'll go over a couple things with this uh, as I move along here but this plasma cutter has been fantastic I've cut through standard sheet metal, uh, I've cut through uh, quarter inch um, plate, angle iron, and I really haven't had any issues with it. And let me show you some of the details of it and uh, some things you might want to just pay attention to. Now as I said before, it is a 240 volt inverter plasma cutter. The item number on this is 60 767 and like I said being a 240 it requires uh, what appears to be similar to uh, a dryer plug-in so it's got one wider tang on it than the other one and I had to put in an outlet it's up there on my wall right there um, to accommodate that so it has its own breaker and everything I don't carry the load on anything else um, let me show you the back. So looking at the back of the plasma cutter, you'll see a few things. One, there's an air inlet. There's also a gauge for air pressure. And then a pressure regulator, cooling fan, and a grounding strap. Now, the air inlet it and it tells you that it needs to have 60 to 80 psi at 3.5 cubic feet per minute that shouldn't be a problem with a decent air compressor um, the you can adjust that with this regulator as well and then the, I mean and the plasma cutter will not operate without air just know that for a fact um, the cooling fan keep it clear and then the grounding wire as you can see down there I have a wire that I run to my bench and it says in the instructions that you can run it to a, a bench, uh, a steel building, or um, a grounding electrode. So just know that, that you need to do that as well. The other thing I do is I've added in just a water separator. I do have a regular water separator on my uh, air feed, but I add this on there just to get any kind of extra that may have made it past the main um, water separator. So I'm going to turn it around and we'll take a look at the front. Now on the front, you see a variety of things. Obviously you've got a power switch. You've got a digital amps meter. It shows uh, the actual current while you're cutting. You've got a, a thermal load or overheat or thermal load uh, indicator lamp. If it does overheat, it tells you don't keep running it, obviously. Um, let it cool down so you can continue to operate. And then you've got a power indicator light here power supply controller this mode selector, now it says set and cutter and it says air um, I'm not sure why that's there it may have something to do with actually setting it up for operation but this needs to be on the air side for it to operate and you also have a working indicator light which just means that it's operating so um, beyond that it's pretty pretty simple uh, you have to install your, your lead for the torch operation and of course the ground. Um, I don't believe those come assembled. And then the only thing that I've gone through, as I've mentioned, is some consumables. And that's the electrodes and also the tip. And they sell these also at Harbor Freight. And there's some part numbers 
so you can see there hopefully. Uh, this one's a little harder to read. It's uh, item 95539. So, um, I'll show you some cutting I've done with it, or I actually will set it up and do some cutting, and then you get an idea of how it operates. Now, for me to do this and try to be as safe as possible, I wear a respirator so I don't get any toxic fumes in me. I do have a very dark shade of lens on my flip-up goggles. I also wear hearing protection because it can be quite loud. And of course I wear gloves. So let me get all my stuff on and I'll show you how this operates. Now the idea is I'm cutting out this little bird mouth or opening on this piece of quarter inch angle iron. So you can see just how thick that is. And you can hear the air blowing through the end of the gun, and that's to cool the tip between uses. And once that turns off, now you can use it again. I just want to show you what it is, how it did as far as cutting. I hope you can see that pretty well. And now it leaves a, a, a bit of slag on the back side and that can be knocked off with a chisel and a hammer and it'll be basically flush. So you can see I had it at a slight angle so it's not exactly square but as far as cutting goes zipped right through that thing. And that's quarter inch angle iron. So hope that was useful. Um, maybe you can find, you'll find this informative. I don't know. But like I said, I, I love this plasma cutter, have no issues with it, and so if you're looking to get one, give this one a shot. Got to use the ground strap on the plasma cutter. Got a little piece here for holding the edge. Now give me a guide for cutting.